Welcome back. Uh, so in this video, I want to do um, a similar problem to the last video, which is that I want to show that Q adjoin square root of 5 plus i is an algebraic extension of Q. All right, so thank you to the uh, viewer that suggested this problem. Uh, this is kind of similar to um, what I was talking about in the previous video. So in the previous video, in the previous video we showed that if alpha and beta are both algebraic over a field k, then both the sum of alpha and beta and the product of alpha and beta are algebraic over k as well. So I wanted to do that video first um, because this is really just a particular case of that. But I also wanted to cover how you could maybe show that this particular complex number uh, is algebraic over Q and how you could do that directly. So these are the things I want to do in this video. So first, we can use what we did in the last video. Um, square root of 5 is algebraic over Q. So I'm going to claim this. This is not hard to show. Um, this is because the minimal polynomial of square root of 5 is x squared minus 5, right? Um, has a root. No. Has, has square root of 5 as a root. And so this is really all you need to, to, um, to do to show that something is algebraic. You just have to find something, a polynomial that it is a root of. Okay, and then, you know, similarly, similarly, you might know what I'm going to write next, that x squared plus 1 has i as a root. And also minus i. Um, but, so basically this shows that square root of 5 is algebraic over Q, and I is algebraic over Q. And so that gets us really easily what we wanted to show, which is that the sum of these two things is algebraic over Q. Great. So, this is one way that you can show this. Okay. Now, to do this more directly, um, What we want to do, we're going to imagine that we don't have the result about alpha plus beta being algebraic over k. And so we want to find a polynomial such that square root of 5 plus i is a root of that polynomial. right? And this will show directly that square root of 5 plus i is algebraic. Okay. Um, so how do we do this? Basically... I want to think of, so I'm going to set square root of 5 plus i to basically just be x. And what I want to do is I want to take powers of square root of 5 plus i, and I want to keep doing that until I get 0. So to show you what I mean, um, usually how you want to start this is take the thing that you want to show as algebraic and just square it. Um, so I'll also write down here x squared, because I'm kind of building my polynomial with each step that I take, right? So what is this? This is um, square root of 5 times square root of 5, which is 5. But I also have i squared, which is negative 1. So you can check that this is just 4 plus 2 square root of 5 times i. And what I want to do is simplify this a little bit. So I'm going to multiply out the, um, the 2 here. 
which I'm allowed to do because um, I'm trying to produce a polynomial over Q, so I can multiply by one half, which gets me this. Um, and then the next thing is that I can subtract two. So I'm just simplifying things down a little bit. So I get this. And I'm almost to something that is just a rational number or an integer. All I have to do is take what I have so far and square it. So I want to square, square to five times i. And that gets me negative five. So then the last step is that I need to take this negative five and add five to it, and I get zero. Great. So what I did here was I took my thing that I wanted to show as algebraic, and I thought of it as being basically x, and then I just constructed a polynomial in x kind of step by step. Um, that if I plug in square root of 5 plus i, I get 0, right? Um, so if I call this my, like, p of x, then I get, by what I was just doing, right, that um, p of square root of 5 plus i is 0. So this is another way of showing that something is algebraic. You can produce a polynomial that it is a root of directly. So hopefully that made sense. Um, the last thing that I wanted to do was I also wanted to use the tower law to show that uh, this is an algebraic extension. And this will be kind of similar to the last video. I think it's nice to talk about these problems in terms of the tower law and the degrees of extensions. Um, because even with this second method that I used, um, I still didn't really show what the degree of the extension was, right? Because I produced a polynomial, this p of x, so that my element is a, is a root of that. Um, but I don't know if like p of x is the minimal polynomial. The minimal polynomial might be a smaller degree polynomial, you know. Um, I haven't really ruled that out yet. Um, so I, I want to do this one uh, additional way using the tower law. Um, and I'm going to do that on the next page. Great, so we're on the next page here. And um, the last thing that I want to do is um, I want to consider this extension, um, q adjoined square root of 5 comma i. And in the last video, I um, showed that um, because these are both algebraic elements, the um, sum of these two elements kind of gives you a field extension that is sandwiched in between this Baker extension, right? So I know that the degree of uh, Q square root of 5i over Q is equal to the degree of this extension over uh, q squared to 5 plus i, and then times the degree of q squared to 5 uh, plus i over q. Um, and I know actually what this degree is on the right, or on the left, sorry, this is equal to 4. Um, so just as a quick note, um, I know that the minimal polynomial of uh, square root of 5 over q is x squared minus 5. And I can check that this is uh, irreducible by Eisenstein's criterion. Um, and so I know that if I just adjoin a square root of 5, the, de the degree of that is 2. And then if I do that, it gives me a strictly real extension. So I know that in particular, the extension doesn't contain i. And so that tells me that the degree of i over q adjoined square root of 5 is also equal to 2, right? Because the minimal polynomial is x squared plus 1. 
So the degree of Q adjoin square root of 5 comma I would just be the product of these two degrees, which is 4, right? And so that's just a quick note of, you know, how do I know that the degree of this extension is 4? All right, so this actually tells me um, quite a lot, right? Because I know that whatever this degree is and whatever this degree is, they have to multiply together to give me 4. And so I really don't have very many options, right? I mean, I guess one thing to note right away is that I know that this extension is not degree 1, right? Because this bigger field has a number that's not rational. And so really there's only two possibilities, right? Either this extension is degree 2, and this is also 2, or it could be that maybe... Um, this extension is equal to 4, uh, sorry, wait, I think I have that reversed. Yeah, this extension is 1, and then this extension is 4. And so these are really my only two possibilities, um, just because I know that they multiply together to give me 4. So the last thing that I want to show is I want to show that this extension is actually degree 1. And then that'll imply that uh, the degree of, of this one is equal to 4. So prove, varying up my colors here a little bit, prove that q adjoin root 5i over q root 5 plus i. OK, so we want to show that this degree is equal to 1. Um, and so first, you know, q root 5 plus i is contained in q root 5i. And we know that by a similar argument to the video I previously uploaded, right? Because this extension contains root 5 and contains i. And so it has to contain the sum of them. So all we really need to show is that q adjoin root 5i is contained in q adjoin root 5 plus i. And that's not super hard. We actually got part of the way there before. Because um, remember, we took square root of 5 plus i, squared it, um, multiplied by 1 half, Right, what that gave us was 2 plus square root of 5i. Um, and then if we subtract 2, that just gives us square root of 5i. So what I basically want to do is I want to show that I can get a square root of 5 by just doing some more of these kind of basic operations of just multiplying and um, summing and things like that, right? So notice now if I take square root of 5 times i and I multiply by square root of 5 plus i, that what does this give me? This gives me 5i um, minus square root of 5. Um, so, you know, again, here I'm just using, like, the closure properties of fields, right? I started uh, by saying that square root of 5 plus i was in my field, and now I'm kind of deducing that some of these other things are in my field as well, right? So, like, this is in q adjoin square root of 5 plus i, just by the fact that I'm multiplying and adding things only. Um, but now... What else can I even do? Well, I can take 5i minus square root of 5, and I can add this to 5 plus i. Um, and, oops, this is uh, this should be square root of 5 plus i. And then this gives me 6i. So what I've shown is that 6i is in q adjoin root 5 plus i. Um, 
And then because this is an extension of q, it contains 1 over 6. And so I can basically conclude that i is in q adjoin square root of 5 plus i. And I will leave it to you as an exercise to check that square root of 5 is also in this extension. So square root of 5 is also in this extension. Um, for the sake of time, I'm not going to do this, but you can do it pretty easily um, by basically just um, using the results that we already got, like showing that i uh, is in this extension and then just using that it's uh, closed under addition and subtraction and, and things like that. Um, so what this shows is that root 5 and i are both contained in, you know, this bigger extension. And so if I adjoin root 5 and i, this is definitely going to be a subfield of this field right here. Um, and so putting all of this together, we get that actually these two are equal, because we showed that they're subsets of each other, and so that gives me the result that I wanted up here, which is that this extension is equal to 1. So what I was doing earlier where I kind of found the minimal polynomial of, you know, square root of 5 plus i, um, basically I found a polynomial that this was a root of, but I didn't know if it was the minimal polynomial. And what this shows is that Whatever the minimal polynomial is, it has to have degree 4, because we just showed that this is 4. And so that actually shows that the polynomial from earlier um, is the minimal polynomial. Although I think you have to multiply by something to make it a monic polynomial first. Um, but yeah, that is basically it for this video. Uh, thank you very much again for watching.